Hello film fans and welcome to this episode of The Shilokian. Now, in order to complete my review of the Walking With series, it's now time to talk about Walking With Cavemen. And I have to be honest, this is the one that I have uh, the least feelings of nostalgia for. All the others I watched quite a lot as a child, um, particularly things like Walking With Dinosaurs and Walking With Beasts. I was quite a big fan of both of those. But this, I remember not watching at all as a child. Uh, I think I watched it once as like a teenager, just out of curiosity, and then never saw it again. And I have to be honest, I'm now starting to wonder why. Because it's really, really good. It's probably my favourite out of all of them. And that's a little bit weird because... To be honest, it's nothing like the rest of the series. By Walking With Monsters, they'd clearly found a kind of rhythm of how to do these things. You have Kenneth Branagh narrating, you have a mixture of um, close-ups of kind of models and then lots of CGI, and you have different episodes set at different time periods, and it's shot very much in the style of a contemporary nature documentary, or even though Walking With Monsters sort of moves a bit away from that. But with this, it's very, very different. You have an actual on-camera presenter who isn't Kenneth Branagh. You have Robert Winston, a genuine paleontologist, you know, on camera talking to you about the stuff you're seeing. He is actually travelling through time and you're looking at um, mainly actors in prosthetics rather than CGI or um, close-ups of models. And I have to be honest, it's a real breath of fresh air. Now, obviously, in, in some ways, of course, uh, this had uh, this series had a, um, a definite advantage over the others. You know, you can't dress up a human to look like a dinosaur, but you can very much dress up a human to look like an ape man or um, uh, a type of human. So they definitely had that advantage, and is really, really, really good. Oh, the prosthetics in particular are amazing. I mean, you look at the humans dressed up as you know, say Australopithecus in the first one, and to be honest. It's difficult to tell that they're actually humans under all that makeup. They look like genuine apes, and their acting is phenomenal. Really, really, really good. And I think they did an excellent job of um, getting Robert Winston, who, you know, the poor bloke had a very difficult job. I mean, after Kenneth Branagh had become quite iconic with the series, to change your presenter is a definite, you know, well, it was a very, you know, um, should we say bold call, but it really, really works. The fact that he knows what he's talking about, and this is no slight on Kenneth Branagh, because obviously he's an actor, and you were never expected to think of him you know, as a dinosaur expert, he was just narrating. But when you see someone who is a genuine sort of enthusiast on screen, a kind of, you know, David Bellamy type of person, sort of moving their hands about and saying, oh, this is very exciting, you, know, you really, really kind of pick up on that emotion. I mean, I'm not a massive particular um, fan of um, anthropology or kind of early humans. I tend to prefer to look at animals, um, which is a bit strange to somebody who's interested in history, but it kind of, for me, um, sort of early humans kind of fall between the two camps. They're not quite history. They're not quite um, um, like um, nature. They're kind of a bit in between, um, as weird as that might sound. So I've never been particularly fascinated by them. But, you know, even watching him, it really, really, you know, got me interested. I thought, oh, come on, tell me a bit more. The other thing I like about it is he's very, very honest. Um, and you can see the kind of the academic kind of caution coming out. With Kenneth Branagh, he would tell you something, you know, as if it was fact, when in fact it was probably more supposition. Um, and I don't blame him for this, because, I mean, if you had an entire documentary series based entirely on supposition, it would get very wearying very quickly. You sort of think, well, how much actually do you know? I mean, why are you even doing this if you don't really know what you're talking about? Um, but while he does, you know, say things, you know, which probably are you know, based more on kind of you know, best guests and estimates, if you like, you do feel that he's, you know, not hedging his bets. He's very honest with you. For instance, in the first episode, uh, Wisdom points out that all the um, the fossils and the, um, the um, I suppose the evidence, if you like, for a um, for you know human ancestors, um, for what a better word, um, they could be put in the back of a Land Rover Discovery. And I really, really liked that. Um, it was it's very, it felt very honest because you realise that you know they they look at something like the Boise Eye in episode two and actually they're um, getting all that evidence from just from its teeth 
and which explains actually you think oh, of course because that's why they talk a lot about its food and stuff and what it eats and how specialized it's become because yes you know they've got the teeth to look at so of course they're going to be looking a lot of what it's eating um so i really liked that because it made you it made you warm to them you felt like they were being honest so a lot of the stuff you were shown you know it, it might not exactly look like that but it's our best guess at the moment kind of thing um so I admired the honesty in that particular thing. The other thing I really liked about it is it actually uses drama quite effectively in a way that I don't think that the other walking with do quite as well. And possibly that's because they're human actors doing it. So they can give a far more sort of dramatic performance, if you like. You really see their emotions. Um, the bit I liked best was in the fourth episode with the Neanderthals. Um, I have a few problems with the portrayal of Neanderthals, which I'll probably talk about in a minute. Um, but the one thing I really like about it is that it's a very dramatic episode. It's basically, it looks at this like Neanderthal tribe who need to move south for the winter, essentially. Um, and the leader's wife is pre heavily pregnant. She's just about to give birth. And he's basically got to make a choice. Does he move his tribe now, knowing full well that in all likelihood... Um, that might mean that his wife will miscarry the baby or the baby will be born and they both might die because, you know, they're on the move and they can't stick around very long in one place for too long. Or does he get the tribe to wait um, so his wife can give birth and then wait until the baby is stronger? Um, but the fact, of course, that there's no food and therefore the whole tribe could potentially die. And basically he decides to go on one last hunt to try and find food before making the inevitable decision that the tribe's got to move and hereby, you know, essentially um, sentencing his own his own child to death. And I really like the way it handled this really complex kind of array of emotions that this um, prehistoric human was feeling. And you, you really got a sense of the kind of sort of mounting doom throughout the sort of um, section of the episode. I, um, despite the fact that obviously they can't talk too much. Um, well, they, they, they do talk quite a bit, but they're talking in, you know, Neanderthal. Um, <laughs> which is just basically a series of, you know, sort of random words that the actors were saying. They really do give an impression of kind of sort of um, a real drama. I mean, I'd far more rather have watched a film about, you know, this particular idea than, say, in 10,000 BC, which is a stupid mix of, like, prehistoric humans, you know, Neanderthals, ancient Egyptians, and just whatever came into the screenwriter's head. It's just such a stupid film. But... As you uh, bought your know, if you watched it, and I, I, this is like small spoilers for the episode, but I'm going to say it anyway. Um, so you have been warned if you haven't seen it. Um, the um, climax is basically they find a herd of mammoths uh, migrating through um, the canyons, and they manage to push a rock down, and it hits one of the mammoths um, entirely by luck, as um, Robert Winston says, and they manage to um, kill a mammoth, and then obviously they've got plenty of food um, to tied them by until the leader's wife has actually had her baby and then they can move you know in um with with a greater degree of safety shall we say i really really liked that ep episode in particular you just, you really started to warm to these characters and you really wanted them to do well um and yeah um i also really like the prosthetics as well i thought it was I mean, I praise the prosthetics in Walking with Monsters in with the Neanderthals, and I stand by that, obviously. But I even like these prosthetics even better. They were even less obtrusive to the actors' emotions. You know, they still looked a bit well. They looked like Neanderthals with sort of you know the big features, but you could imagine them sort of doing ordinary things that humans do. Now, I mentioned that I had a few criticisms to make about some of the things they said, particularly about the Neanderthals which I don't think have aged very well. Um, I'm sure it was entirely in keeping with what was modern scientific thought at the time, but I sort of, well, I, I don't entirely agree with some of the things they said. For instance, they said that they'd, well, it was a bit of an odd thing. They basically said that they had a de limited degree of imagination, but they didn't, they couldn't, you know, you couldn't tell a Neanderthal a joke and it would have understood it. Um, first of all, <laughs> I have a slight, you know, problem with the <laughs> the joke Robert Winston uses in an example about, you know, two, um, what was it, uh, on the mammoth that goes to the doctor, <laughs> and I can't remember the exact punchline, you know, which shows how good a joke it was, but I sort of thought, well, first if you told them that joke, they wouldn't understand it because they don't speak English, <laughs> and secondly, it's about things that, you know, Neanderthals have no concept for, well, I suppose they have probably had medicine men, but I thought it was a bit unfair, but secondly, I thought, you're saying they have no sense of humour? 
or rather that they don't you know tell jokes that seems to me a bit of a petty thing to say i mean how could you possibly know that from the fossil record you're just sort of hypothesizing that because they're sort of you know a more primitive version of humans that they don't it more sort of kind of trying to you know fit um your, I don't know, I suppose, fit um, fossils into a theory rather than building a theory off the fossils themselves. I mean, in fact, I think that such an idea probably would be frowned upon a bit more now. I think that, generally speaking, Neanderthals are seen as this subspecies of humans that are every bit as intelligent as modern humans, and that they died out less from you know modern humans being cleverer and going around murdering more, and possibly more just the fact that there was less Neanderthals, they were more inbred, they may have... Uh, there was almost certainly a degree of interbreeding between uh, modern Homo sapiens and Homo neanderthalis. So I, I think that probably a few of the things they say about them is, you know, probably not, well, would be less accepted now than it was back then. Having said that, though, I really do like the way they do try and fill in gaps and stuff, um, which obviously you have to do because, I mean, they don't have all the facts before them. So they've got to try and you know, embellish things and make them interesting. I particularly like the bit with um, Homo or Castor um, when they're in the third episode, when they're sort of running around hun hunting wildebeest and stuff. I really like the fact that the leader has a crocodile tooth, which he keeps holding in his um, mouth just to, as a sign of sort of dominance and sort of bravery. I really like that. I mean, obviously, we don't know if they did that or not at all, but it's a really cool trick. It may really sort of embellish their culture. You know, the fact that he's you know, got a sort of a symbol of greatness, you know, in his mouth. I must admit, I was a bit worried for the actor's safety. I sort of thought, ooh, <laughs> that's a bit of a choke hazard. You know, <laughs> I hope he's, you know, I hope Homo Acasta have carried out a risk assessment about him carrying that around in his teeth. But no, it's just such a great series. Um, It really kind of... um. It really kind of creates drama out of you know these um, kind of very sm like small bits of the fossil record, which we don't really and know a great deal about. But it it made it exciting. It made you want to find out more about these things. And for someone that wasn't particularly interested in that branch of paleontology, you know, I, I really really enjoyed it and was really surprised that I enjoyed it. I think that's probably one of the reasons why I thought of, I see this probably as the highlight of the entire series. Um, despite the fact it's actually not as much like, you know, the sort of general type of walking with as, say, um, walking with dinosaurs or walking with beasts. But yeah, I thought it was absolutely excellent, even if you, I mean, the chances of somebody who's a creationist watching this video is probably quite small, I would have thought. It's probably not the kind of documentary that generally attracts creationists, a one that's very definitely based on evolution. But if you are a creationist, you should still definitely watch this, simply because it, I think you get something out of it. Even if you don't agree with evolution, or the, sort of the way evolution is portrayed in the uh, series, it's, it's very... It's very fun, um, I think is the way to describe it. It feels like a kind of uh, a docudrama rather than a documentary. And Robert Winston is brilliant. I'm so infectious. I mean, I really don't want to watch something else. And if anyone's got any recommendations for other things that he's presented, I'd be really interested because this is the only thing I've ever seen him in. I actually had to look him up to see what his background was. Um, and in fact, I think in the American version, they actually um, they actually changed him out for Alec Baldwin, who doesn't obviously appear on screen. He just narrates it. Um, I assume that's because they thought American audiences, you know, wouldn't react very well to a British guy in you know a big hat and big moustache, you know, <laughs> time travelling. But I think it's a real shame. And if you are American and you haven't seen this particular version, you should definitely watch it because I think it's probably better. Um, and it it uses its environment a lot better to have the um, narrator actually present and talking to and interacting interacting sometimes, you know, with the different kind of um, early humans he encounters, like for instance the Homo habilis will jump over his car, like a bit like baboons at the zoo, <laughs> and he's to drive off very quickly. I really liked that scene. Um, so yeah, this is an absolutely fantastic end, climax if you like, to the Walking With series, and yeah, I really enjoyed it. So that was the Sherlockian, thanks very much for watching film fans, and I'll hopefully see you in the next one. Goodbye!